Good morning. Here we are, the beginning of a week and busy, uh, like always, but I'm so grateful that we get to be busy. A lot of folks laying in hospitals and rest homes would love to be able to get out and be busy and and uh, involved in things. And, and much of our world, uh, seven, maybe seven and a half billion people, many of them sit idle, no jobs, um, food is a shortage, and and uh, we, we've got a mess in America, but let's don't forget to get up each day thankful. God's been good to us. And, and if you haven't yet, take a moment and, and thank God for how good he's been. And um, and thank God for his faithfulness and his, his sovereign plan. I don't believe in the sovereignty of God that he chooses one for heaven and one for hell. But I do believe in the sovereignty of God that he has a, a purpose in many areas. One is that I would be conformed to the image of Christ. If you're saved, the same with you. He predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son, Romans 8 says. Um, so he's got plans, but then, then there's global plans and national plans. And when Joseph's brothers hated him and sold him into slavery, God had a plan. And it's not that God was dead. So uh, you don't have to fret about that. Oh, we're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 7 right here for just a moment. And I want to read a couple of verses because sometimes things are a little scary. And sometimes, I don't know about you, but um, sometimes I feel like I'm not a good Christian when I don't just rejoice in the Lord always. And um, when I'm not just resting in Him and trusting in Him. And, and there's so much in the Bible, fear not and trust and rest and wait patiently. And, and, and God is so good and He is good and He deserves that. But we have a flesh, and, and in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. So there are those times that even the Son of God went to the Father not wanting a certain circumstance to take place or wishing there was another way. And perhaps you're today facing that. I wish there was another way. I wish I didn't have to travel this road. Could not I reach that destination God has ordained for me without me going through this difficult path? But God leads his dear children along, the song writer wrote, some through the fire and some through the flood. And so that's where we live, and that is a, a part of, of, um, of life we have in general. When our son Josh was going through his cancer treatments, his two bouts with cancer, um, and he's young, late 20s, and early 30s and we uh, there were times I I don't know that I worried it bothered me it weighed on me I knew God's good God's faithful whatever God wanted to do was good but that doesn't mean I was enjoying the journey and a friend of mine said um, he said um, if you love then you have to have emotions attached and the very fact that you love if you could have someone go through a deep trial and not even have it bother you, then that's probably evidence you didn't love them very much. Um, the deeper the love, the more you miss that person who's gone on to heaven. The deeper the love, the more you're concerned about that child who's off in college or married or, or doing like our, our youngest going off to a third world country. It's one thing for us to watch our youngest child go to college and then to get married and then to go off running around the country raising support to go to another country as a missionary. Um, but he's always been within a three or four hour plane ride if we needed. But now he's really going to do it. And, um, you know, and the, it's not this week, but in the coming months, probably before summer, depending on immigration papers and all that's all in, in God and the government's hands. But he's going to go. He is going to be in a third world country with his wife and his two babies. There's one thing when he went there as a college guy with another college guy to work under a pastor who is in that country. Well, now that pastor's gone and he's going with his wife, not with another guy. And he's got the two grandkids. Maybe he should leave the grandkids here. Uh, but I'm too old to raise grandkids. I like to take them and babysit them and feed them and spoil them a little bit. I don't want to raise them. I'm, uh, there's a reason they give kids to young people with energy. And so, but all that to say, bring us to 2 Corinthians 7. And again, the Apostle Paul writing, one of the you know, maybe the greatest Christian ever, you know, from the time of Christ uh, to today. And I want to just read a couple of verses here. Um, in verse five, he said, for when we were come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest. 
So just stop there for a minute. You do have flesh. It is a part of your world. You live in this body. You get stubbed toes. You get diverticulitis. You get headaches. You get um, cavities. You get tired. Um, that's just a reality. And so in our flesh, we had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings, within were fears. And, and so there was just strife and struggle going on all around him. And without were fightings. And here's the apostle Paul going through these things and it, it was no fun. Uh, he gets there, he gets to Macedonia and, um, and if you were looking at a map, um, trying to turn it around your way, there's Israel in the Mediterranean. Then you go up to uh, the Asia Minor where Ephesus and Galatia were. And then you go up and across uh, above Greece and uh, Corinth down here a little bit toward the Mediterranean Sea. And, and uh, that the, Paul was praying about what to do and where to go. And, and the song writer writes, You've heard, we've heard the Macedonian call. Well, this man in Macedonia, there, he had, Paul had a vision of a man in Macedonia saying, come help us. And so Paul went by foot or by boat and got to Macedonia. God called him. God sent him there. But it didn't mean it was easy. And just because you're in the will of God doesn't mean you don't have fear. I remember the, uh, one of the pastors back in Indiana saying that as Dr. Hiles, he'd, he'd had a heart attack and, um, when he was in Mexico preaching and, um, and he got well enough to travel back home and he did the Wednesday Bible study, not well. And he had another heart attack and then he surrendered and they took him to a hospital and they were going to do surgery on him. And he said, um, to, to somebody there, as uh, he said something like, um, I'm not worried about whether I'm going to heaven or not, but to say, I'm not afraid would be lying. And, um, just because you know everything's okay doesn't mean the the unknown is not intimidating or you don't know how it's going to turn out. And I can tell you, looking back at the most difficult things I've faced, God gives you grace to go through them. But I don't want to go through it again. <laughs> and I, I don't want to insult God, but I don't want to go through that trial to experience his grace. <laughs> Kirby Campbell, a dear friend of ours, just as one of the finest Christian men, him and his wife and his kids and what a great family. But um, he went through 10 years. He had a medical mistake cripple him. And for 10 years, he suffered beyond words how he suffered. And uh, but I think during those 10 years, he preached, he opened a ministry, treasured, tr treasured trials, and he preached all over the country about how to handle your trials and, and how to suffer and stay near to God. And he, I, I'm sure he preached to more people in the 10 years of suffering than he did the 10 years prior when he wasn't suffering. And he said... If I could go back and reverse it and not have gone through that, I wouldn't do it. And I, th I think you're a better Christian than me. I don't know if I'd feel that way. But God's grace is sufficient. So, sufficient. so um, you're not a bad Christian. If you fear, the Apostle Paul said, without we're fightings and within we're fears. We're flesh. We've got these things. Should we trust God? Yes, we should. But you know, Jeremiah is down in the dungeon under the, under the, the king's palace and like a sewer down there. And he's mad at God, it sounds like. You know, he says, you, you deceive me, you're stronger than me, you're greater than me, and I, you know, you've, I can't fight this, but I'm, you've not been, you've not been true to me or something along those lines. And, and, I, and he said, I'm not gonna preach anymore. And a little while later he said, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire and I could not contain. Now, as, just look down there with me at verse, that next verse, verse five, I'm sorry, verse six. Nevertheless, so there's fightings outside, there's fears inside, but he says, nevertheless, God that comforteth those that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus. God comforts you when you're what? When you're cast down. So I don't think it's wrong that you get cast down. I don't think it's wrong that sometimes you sit and, um, and the weight of life is heavy on your heart and you wonder what you're supposed to do. And, um, you know, maybe it's guilt over something your past you shouldn't be. It's all under the blood, but but we do that. And sometimes it's worry about what you're going to do next. It might be you're getting older and it's a medical thing or a financial thing. Or it might be your your spouse or your children are having some burdens and your job world. Maybe you watch too much news and, and that's making you petrified. You know, the cash is going to be gone and, and um, jobs are going to be gone and, 
and uh, all that money you saved up is going to go away and, and your 401k is going to be absorbed by the Antichrist or whatever. And you listen to the news too much, it'll scare you. And look, just rest in him. But when you do, he says, God that comforteth them that are cast down. Comforteth those that are cast down in, in 2 Corinthians 7, 6. He was comforted by God, but also by Titus. Sometimes the presence of a friend matters. And so you may not be going through the downtime, but maybe a visit to a friend would be a good thing. You know, somebody that's carrying a load, it wouldn't hurt to stop by. You say, what good am I? You bring the comfort of God, maybe. Uh, wouldn't hurt at all. Wouldn't hurt at all to make a call, send a text, make a visit, and let people know you care. But mainly this morning, understand this, there's some fears. There's some times you're cast down. You're not a bad Christian. You're in a bad old world. But the good news is we are getting out of this thing. And as far as I'm concerned, the sooner the better. Have a good day. Thanks so much for the great weekend. I didn't get to address it, but thank you for, for just a great, great weekend. God bless you. Have a great week.